After protesting against Vladimir Putin's government, a group of young activists from the nonviolent protest group Besrochka are taking a well-needed break. They're surprised that this protest didn't see a single arrest in contrast to a long summer of demonstrations marked by police violence. Besrochka is the union of people who consider themselves advocates of peaceful, non-violent protests. We don't have any leaders, we don't have a strict organizational structure. The interview is suddenly cut short when a group of riot police turn up and order the youngsters to clear the square. Now the police have come, but in general everything's okay, everything is peaceful. We aren't breaking any rules, people are just sitting, so the police will see that and they won't arrest anybody. Ivanov is unfortunately mistaken. After demanding a legal justification for clearing the square, one activist, Maxim Kondratyev, is roughly forced into a police car and carted off to the nearest station. <laughs> this is the reality faced by many of these activists. They spent most of their free time this summer in detention, waiting for friends to be released from jail, or planning their next act of civil disobedience. 17-year-old Olga Misik is Besrochka's best-known member. A photo of her sitting cross-legged in front of a line of riot police reading from a copy of the Russian Constitution went viral. It is constant activism that will influence other people to also get out onto the streets. The more we go out, the more chance we have of changing something. Some Besrochka activists participated in a protest defense training session. It was held at a venue named in honor of the Soviet Union's most famous dissident, Andrei Sakharov. A hundred or so gathered to learn what to do if arrested, how to act in the police van, and the detention procedure. Dedicated to the training, they use real riot police gear and scare tactics. We will try to do with you what they, the riot police, try to do. We will inspect and search you. We'll put you in the police van, and your task will be to listen to the civil activist. Technological innovation has enabled groups like Besrochka to coordinate their actions more effectively. Its website instructs users to join a protest navigator on the encrypted messaging app Telegram. It directs new recruits to a hub of chats and automated bots. Telegram is officially banned in Russia after creators refused to hand over its encryption keys to the authorities last year. It's become something of a resistance symbol among Russian internet users. I post about it on Telegram, where I am, what I'm doing and why I'm here. I post photos and videos to say we are going here, where we are going, how many people have come. A political technology expert says tools like Telegram don't drive protests. They're driven by the ability to organize political structure around their grievances. It is a tool for people, people real people, offline interaction more than some of the other platforms. So groups like Bistrochka, this is about effect, effective coordination of offline action. More broadly, activists avoid any direct physical confrontation with the police at rallies and try to maintain anonymity on the Internet. The current protests and groups like Bistrochka are more concerned with legal procedures, defense tactics and self-organization. It marks a shift in civil consciousness previously unseen in Russia.